Hello, info person. This is Anton, and in this video, we're going to discuss eyes, but more specifically, animal eyes. And even more specifically, we're going to be discussing the shape of the pupil, mostly because by itself, this is a really complex and somewhat bizarre phenomenon with various animals evolving different shapes for their pupil depending on their lifestyle. But if you're wondering why things seem to be a little bit different in this video, that's because, as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, and I'm still traveling, I'm still trying to solve my issue with broken hardware and lost footage, and so basically I'm making a lot of additional videos on topics I really wanted to explore, but never had a chance to explore. And this is one of those topics. And it actually started a few years back, when I was browsing social media, and I came upon this somewhat unusual picture. I think it might have been something like this. And here there was a description of various types of pupils with a very brief explanation suggesting that certain types of pupils seem to apply to only certain types of animals. For example, vertical pupils were mostly for hunters, horizontal pupils were mostly for prey. And that to me kind of seemed just a little bit incorrect, or at least incorrect to some extent, and so I decided to explore it, decided to do some research, and produce this video. And it actually took me three years, mostly because this was one of my unfinished scripts. And so let's discuss this idea in a little bit more detail, focusing on everything we know about pupil shape and why it seemed to have evolved differently in different animals. But as always, approach this from a more scientific perspective, with actual studies to explain everything. And well, one fact we know for certain is that, even though most eyes in the animal kingdom are essentially round or spherical, quite a few animals do have non-round pupils, evolved for very precise and very specific adaptations and containing very specific functions. And here's actually a real good picture showing us the incredible diversity in the animal kingdom. And the most famous of them all is the cat's eye in the bottom left. But why do so many animals have so much diversity? And what exactly is happening here? And so even though previously there have been some suggestions and some assumptions, we now have several studies that seem to explain most of this. And while as previously assumed, lifestyle seems to be the main explanation. Whether the animal is hunting, hiding, living in the water, or grazing, it does seem to affect the pupil shape, and it's not just about how much light seems to get in. And so let's explore this together, debunk some of the misconceptions, and let's start with the most famous eye of them all, the cat's eye, or the eye of the ambush predator. And this is of course the eye we're all familiar with. And technically it's referred to as the vertical slit pupil. Something that all cats possess, but also something that snakes possess as well. And for a very long time the prevailing theory was that these pupils allow for a greater range of light control, which might be important for ambush predators, which tend to hide either in darkness or in daylight conditions somewhere in the grass. And this kind of made sense because these pupils create an enormous range of light control by changing their shapes. For example, for cats, they can actually change their pupil area by approximately 135 times. And when you compare this to our pupils, they can only change the area by about 15 times. And so this can obviously be very useful for animals, active both in day and night, allowing them to see in a lot of different light conditions, and allowing them to catch anything. But here things get interesting because it also seems to be about orientation of the slit. And so it's actually not just about the size. And here, based on research by Martin Banks from University of California, first of all, it was confirmed that vertical pupils seem to be mostly found in ambush predators. And so foxes, domestic cats, crocodiles, vipers, and a few more animals. And that's because in this case, vertical slits create what's known as astigmatic depth of field. It's sort of visualized in this image. In simpler terms, it allows for incredibly precise distance judgment especially when it comes to vertical contours. And this seems to be important for animals that tend to chase prey. And so, for example, imagine a mouse moving around really fast and a cat hiding, trying to catch it. A vertical pupil is actually going to help pinpoint the exact location and distance, even if the cat does not move its head. And in this case, it doesn't want to move because it's just going to make it much easier to find. And so it's almost like having some kind of a laser rangefinder for hunting. But that's just for domestic cats. Not all cats have the same pupils. And that's actually our first misconception. Not all hunters and not all ambush hunters seem to have these pupils. 
And so even though house cats definitely do, lions, or even tigers, which are also ambush predators, actually have round pupils just like us. And as you might know, tigers, especially because of their stripes, are actually some of the most prototypical or iconic ambush predators. And so the question is, well, why is there so much difference then? And here the answer seems to be height. In this case, because the cats are much shorter, and obviously tigers and lions are much taller, the benefits of the vertical slit for depth perception become most apparent only in short animals, meaning that the eyes have to be very close to the ground, which makes a lot of sense for animals like snakes. But a lion or a tiger don't really get the same optical advantage, and they also tend to chase their prey much more often, so they evolve to have different pupil shapes, because having round pupils is just a little bit better. With the conclusion being that, well, essentially, ambush predators that are generally short in size will usually have vertical slit pupils, whereas larger predators tend to have eyes similar to our own. Alright, what about horizontal pupils? Well, here, if the vertical pupils were for hunters, it was always believed that horizontal pupils seem to represent the prey, so goats, sheep, horses, deer, and so on. You can see one of these eyes in the top left corner. And one thing all of these animals have in common is that they're all grazing animals. And they often have their eyes positioned on the sides of their heads, which gives them a unique wide field of view that's almost panoramic in nature. And that's of course important for spotting those tigers or those lions trying to chase you down. Here they're able to spot predators from any direction. But the horizontal pupil takes this to an entirely new level. It actually acts as a built-in visor dramatically enhancing the amount of light received from the front and behind the animal, while also reducing the amount of distracting light from above and below, which actually ends up creating a super sharp wide-angle view of the ground, allowing these animals to detect subtle movement, while also improving the image quality on the horizontal plane, which is obviously extremely important for these animals, and also allows them to essentially scan the area around them, even creating a kind of a map when they need to flee rapidly across the uneven terrain. But here is, I guess, the truly mind-blowing part. The part that even surprised the scientists. If the advantage of a horizontal pupil is to maintain a clear view of the horizon, what happens when the grazing animal lowers its head to eat? I mean, technically, as they lower their head, the pupil is going to tilt and thus potentially lose its advantage. And that's because it's no longer horizontal. Turns out that's not the case. Nature found a solution, and it's kind of incredible. When observing grazing animals like goats, sheep, and horses, they notice that they also tend to rotate their eyes and their heads as they bend down to graze. In other words, they always tend to maintain their pupils in horizontal position. And so this remarkable eye movement, known as cyclovergence, involves each eye rotating by up to 50 degrees, and sometimes even in opposite directions. And so even though some people can cross their eyes quite easily, here we're talking about animals being able to misalign their eyes completely and even turn them up to 50 degrees. This was an entirely unknown phenomenon until recently, and it definitely highlights how specialized and dynamic a lot of these ocular adaptations truly are. And of course highlights the idea behind evolutionary pressure, even down to extremely subtle mechanics of simple eye movement. And honestly, when I discovered this, I found it to be super fascinating. Okay, but what about our eyes? What about circular pupils? Well, here we do have quite a lot of animals with this shape as well. Obviously humans, but also tigers, lions, owls, elephants, wolves, and quite a lot of advanced animals that tend to have diverse lifestyles. And the first assumption here would be, okay, maybe circular pupils might not be very specialized. Compared to those slit-shaped counterparts, that seem to be perfect for certain lifestyles. But because of their versatility, round pupils actually seem to be extremely common, mostly because they're associated with so many more different lifestyles. For example, active foraging. That's of course something like an elephant or a giraffe. Also, pursuit predators like lions, or even humans, that have to actively chase down their prey rather than ambushing them. And so here, wide field of view and overall light gathering are a lot more important than having hyper-accurate depth perception, which is what's offered by the vertical slits, or the super-wide field of view offered by the horizontal slits. But the round pupils can still constrict and dilate to control light, and they still provide a wide enough field of view for most active foragers. And here one of the best examples would be comparing a fox and a wolf. 
wolves have large circular pupils, whereas small foxes usually have vertical pupils. Which actually goes back to that idea of height. Here this applies to much taller animals whose eyes are further from the ground tend to have circular pupils. And that actually applies to both predators and foragers. And so a wolf that's a formidable tall predator does not require the same eyes as the cat, whereas its smaller cousin, the fox, which usually stays much closer to the ground, benefits from having vertical slits. And so the optical advantage of a vertical slit seems to diminish significantly when the eye is much higher from the ground. And because there are so many different tall animals, both predators and prey, it essentially resulted in the circular pupil becoming a kind of a workhorse of the animal world. Although ironically, horses tend to have rectangular horizontal pupils. But here this shows us that even in terms of evolution, sometimes normal solution is actually the most effective. You don't really need to have a specialized pupil to still be an extremely effective predator like a wolf, a lion or a tiger. But what about some of the more bizarre shapes? For example, W shapes often found in certain marine animals. Well, naturally here we also have certain explanations. And that's because not all pupil shapes tend to fit into these three main categories. And so because of this incredible power of natural selection, certain animals evolved something truly bizarre. And now let's start with the strangest one yet, cuttlefish. The W-shaped pupil very likely designed for just one thing, balancing the uneven vertical light field in various aquatic environments. Or just to rephrase this, it cuts down scattered light and dramatically improves image contrast, giving these animals superior vision for hunting, camouflage, and complex underwater worlds. And so here it's kind of comparable to a light filter that sometimes divers put on their cameras in order to take better pictures. Then we have geckos. A pupil with multiple pinholes that will often constrict and become even more pronounced in very bright light. And this is of course not just a random pattern. These pinholes individually create a much greater depth of field, very often allowing geckos to accurately judge distances in various light conditions. And this is of course crucial because geckos tend to be nocturnal animals. And so if we use a camera example again, their pupils are kind of like a multi-aperture lens. They're able to see different things in different light conditions at different times. Then we have U-shaped eyes from various rays and various skates. And here this shape tends to decrease the effects of lenticular spherical aberration, which sometimes occurs because different parts of the lens refract light differently, causing several focal points inside the eye. And in normal eyes this would actually create a lot of blurring, but for the skates and rays it allows them to have way more control over their focal points presenting them with the focused image no matter where they're hiding. And at the same time, it also kind of aids to their camouflage because having these types of pupils makes them much more difficult to find. They kind of blend into the surroundings much easier. And so essentially here we have a pupil for every possible niche. And though like with everything else in life, there are always exceptions, for the most part evolutionary pressure caused certain pupil shapes to become more successful in certain conditions. For example, you can see from this image, there's not a single herbivore out there that possesses vertical slits. Now, although obviously, like I mentioned, there are always certain exceptions. For example, certain frogs and certain snakes, despite being predators and even ambush predators with a relatively low height, for some reason still evolved horizontal slit pupils, similar to what we usually expect from a grazing animal instead. And mostly because in certain conditions, especially if you're trying to ambush your prey, horizontal slits can be much more beneficial in dim light. And so there is definitely a bond with creativity when it comes to evolution. Each unique eye, each peculiar pupil, is a finely tuned instrument adapted to the animal's specific ecological niche and survival needs. And so there you have it, a more scientific approach explaining different types of pupils in animals, focusing on scientific studies and focusing on discoveries from various ecological niches. With the overall conclusion being that this is a deeply functional adaptation linked to every animal's lifestyle and important for their survival. And so on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining the channel membership where you can find 
even more footage, get early access to a lot of different videos, and get some more bonuses as well. Alternatively, you can buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description. And so stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.